What's up, gang? It's Stu Wettstein with Recruiter Confidential, and welcome back to bonus video number six of the seven strategies for getting the offer in 2013. We've covered a lot of ground, and I hope you've been able to see the other five videos, but even if you're just starting with this one, that's totally cool. Now we're really kind of getting to it. We're talking about working with recruiters, and this is sort of obviously one of my favorite topics, having been a recruiter for basically the last 20 years, or maybe my whole life, but specifically the last 20 years as a professional. So let's talk about a couple of general rules for working with recruiters. Rule number one, transparency. What, how can I tell the truth? If I tell the truth, then I'm not gonna know, no, that stuff doesn't work anymore. Let me tell you how it works with recruiters now. Between LinkedIn and the way the world's network is connected, anything that you might be trying to hide, anything that you're trying to spin anybody, if you've got 10 recruiters on standby because you're trying to get one job, for the most part, you gotta shoot everybody straight because everybody knows everybody and it always comes back. So transparency, honestly, our parents were right. The honesty is the best policy is kind of the, the rule number one with recruiters. Okay, let's get on with it. Rule number two, the difference of the different types of recruiters. And I just want to cover this stuff quickly because there's a, there's a lot of different types of recruiters that you might encounter, but two basic types. Internal recruiters, somebody who works at the company that you want to go work at. Easy to identify them and they're typically going to have a very specific agenda. They may have a lot of jobs that they're recruiting for, they're usually going to have very strong intel on who the hiring manager is, what they're looking for, what they're maybe not looking for. So obviously ask you know, as many questions as you can get away with. And their goal is to get the job filled. And you're also more than likely going to have to follow the rules and play you know, by their game. And you know, I've worked with, with candidates who have worked with some of the big giant companies, you know, the Amazons of the world. And what I can tell you about working with them is they're going to have a very specific you know, set of rules you're going to have to follow if you want to be a candidate. And if not, the reality is there's somebody next on the list. Second type of recruiter that most commonly you're going to run into is a third party recruiter, somebody like myself who is working on behalf of the company trying to introduce them to the right candidate, preferably you. And the way you're going to work with those recruiters also is being transparent, but you might be able to get a little bit more intel from a third party recruiter because they're not directly working for the company and they might be able to give you a little bit more off the record intel on likes, dislikes, and how to best prepare for the job. Working with a third-party recruiter, the other thing I would tell you is they're compensated the vast majority of the time, and this isn't like, you know, nobody talks about this stuff, but, you know, I don't think it's a trade secret to talk about how people get paid. The way I get paid, the way a third-party recruiter gets paid is based on what your offer is going to be, some percentage of that. It doesn't come out of your offer, by the way, but that's what the company pays. So why do I tell you this? When you're working with me, when candidates are working with me, and we get to the offer, which is obviously the exciting part, how do they know they've got the best offer? How do they know they, should they counter? Should they ask for more? Should they ask for more of this or that? Partner with your recruiter, internal or a third-party recruiter, and let them know what you'd have to have for it to be a yes. doesn't mean they're going to be able to provide it. You need a company car, you need a bunch of expenses covered, or you need a much higher base salary than they can offer. But by shooting them straight, you do develop a partnership. And getting them that list of the things that will help you get to a yes, that's what they're there for. And again, in my example of the third party recruiter, the reality, no one's more incentivized than them for you to get more in the offer because that's how their commission is paid. Make sense? So if a recruiter tells you, and I'm not just trying to make this about you know cheering for the recruiter, but if a recruiter tells you, hey, listen, here's the offer. They're going to come in at $12 an hour, my first salary, by the way, at AOL. That's why I quote that salary. And that's the best they can do. Best and final, I'm telling you. They got 40 people they're making offers to at $12 an hour. You want to be one of them awesome. If not, you know, it's okay, but there are other people on the list. They can tell you that. So that's how, that's a few steps out what I would say in partnering with the recruiters. And again, honesty is the best policy. Shoot them straight, ask them tough questions, and you're going to find that they're the best resource when you're fortunate enough to work with one. Make sense? All right, we got one step left. I will see you on the other side when we get into step number seven, strategy number seven, gratitude.